Hey everyone, it's Jason. Uh, today's unboxing, we're going to do Zombie Side Undead or Alive. So this is the Western themed Zombie Side game. Uh, so if you're not familiar with what Zombie Side is, it's essentially survival horror. Uh, you play as a group of survivors trying to get some sort of objective um, and moving your miniatures around on a map, uh, stabbing in the area for equipment. Uh, various weapons so you can attack and fight back. Well, zombies spawn every turn. Um, and they're usually, again, you're some, so you need some sort of objective you need to do, and then you need to escape the map. Um, and then you just can't, nobody can die. If any, typically, if anyone dies, the game is over. So it lends itself to, like, kind of being a little stressful type game. Um, just because you really. Unlike some other, like, maybe, uh, I want to say combat-style games, you might think of, like, oh, I can just run in and attack, and I can always run back out and heal, or I have a bunch of health in games. Um, this, your characters all have usually, like, two to three health, and enemies typically do one to two damage every turn. So, you can't run into a horde of zombies and be like, I can single-handedly take out 20 zombies, because... You probably can't. You can maybe handle two or three at a time. You know, and then you kind of gotta get away. Um, so, although this is um, a zombie side game, it's not going to be one-to-one -one compatible with every other zombie side game. Because um, each one does... Um, they, they change up things just to, like, the core rules are the same. The basis of how everything's played is the same. But they kind of change some of the some of the way different uh, the characters' abilities work, or how the equipment works, or the map, or some things like this. So you could conceivably combine them all, um, but you would have to like make your own in-home rules. You can't just pick up characters from this game and put them in like the regular zombie side game or like the uh, Marvel zombie game, like because everything plays just a little differently. Uh, so just with that, so we're going to go ahead and jump into the core set. Um, and then subsequent videos will have uh, all the uh, regular expansions plus like a bunch of Kickstarter expansions. Which you might be able to find at retail. Um, so there's a lot of stuff in here, so we're just going to hop right in. So you're going to get uh, 73 zombie miniatures. So you're going to get a bunch of walkers, runners, brutes, and abomination. Um... And double sided tiles, 14 different survivors with your playable characters. So you get a bunch of different people to play as. So you're not stuck playing as the same, like two or three people. Um, some miniature games start you off with, like, here's five characters. So it's like, well, I guess if we're playing a five player game, everyone gets one character and this. So they give you some good options. Uh, plus a bunch of tokens, cards. Um, all that fun accessory stuff you need to play the game. Uh, yeah, so they had other zombie sides like Classic, which is, you know, the city, city version, uh, apocalyptic set. They had Fantasy, which is like Black Plague, and um, Green Horde, which is like the Dark Ages, which is like your elves and goblins and stuff. And then they also have um, Sci Fi, which is like Invader, which had space themed. Uh, aliens and things like that. And then now, of course, they have this, and then they have the Marvel version. Um, and then, like, a side version of that would be the Massive Darkness games, which are also fantasy, but there you're fighting hordes of monsters as opposed to undead. But they play very... They play similar and different at the same time, which is kind of cool. Um, uh, but I'm not going to go over that. So, setup is fairly, fairly simple. Uh, choose a mission. Uh... Place the tiles as shown, place different markers as they tell you to. Gather your survivors however, many, however you want to play. Um, so then you can, you know, and you can also add any of the expansion survivors into here. So if you get one of the expansion sets, they're all mix and match. Uh, very easy to take dash, take your dashboard, your cards, all that fun stuff. Then you have an equipment deck with a blue background, which you'll set aside. Shuffle that up. You'll shuffle up your zombie deck face down. You have an abomination deck. So this only this set only comes with one abomination, so it's not very hard to shuffle it. But as you buy other expansions, you might have more 
um, different abominations so that way when they appear you don't know which one you're gonna get um, and then they have bounty weapons which are special ones you have to earn they're kind of fun uh, then there's gray starting equipment we'll look over all these cards a little bit more uh, basically just gonna gather each different card type it's in its own different thing um, and then each survivor has different equipment listed that they can uh, their favorite equipment and gets this corresponding equipment of the said type. Um, so they each start a basic weapon and then you can find better weapons as you go along. So uh, then there's four types of survivors, brawlers, faithful, gunslingers, and town folk. Um, and again, I'll jump over a little bit more detail into some of these as we get into them. But the setup for the game is fairly simple. So like there's a setup for uh, six players, their board, their starting cards, um, all their pegs. So they have little pegs over here, which will indicate like health, special abilities, your starting card. Um, your tracker on the bottom here is your danger bar, uh, which is essentially like an experience meter. And then you have some extra little dots up there, so if you get more abilities. Um, and then how the game is played. Um, Players did go, so players take first, uh, take their turns activating the survivors one at a time in the order of their choice. So now this is one thing that's really fun about this game is that um, each player has three actions and they can do various stuff, moving, attacking, using special skills, but you don't have to go player one, player two, player three. Um, so everyone can kind of go in whatever order makes the most sense. So it might make sense for the third player in the group um, to go first because that way they can maybe kill a guy that's closer to them or draw the attention of the zombies away from them or do something and then the second player can go then the first player can go last and the next turn you can switch it all around um so whatever makes the most sense for moving people we want or maybe you know this guy's already next to a spot where he can stab an item he can stab it and then he can move trade it to somebody else and that guy can use it on their turn um, then the zombies all get to go. Basically, they try and use their action points, either one or two if they have multiple actions. They try to attack first. If they can't attack, then they move. And if they can, if they have a second action and they move, they can attack again if they're in there. So they don't, like, dart across the board super fast or anything, uh, but you still gotta watch getting trapped. Um, and then the end phase is you gotta flip over a boom token. Um, basically that's a way to, to attract, um, attract the zombies. If you make noise, they're gonna go towards the noise. Um, so winning and losing. Game is lost whenever any survivor has been eliminated, uh, including companions, which are essentially escorts, uh, to do escort missions. And then the mission objective can no longer be filled. Uh, so this would be if it says, um, like, just as an example, and I'm not just so saying this is one of them, but if it's like, like you had to uh, rescue this thing or collect this objective, and then for some reason you can't collect that objective anymore because it got destroyed. Maybe it had so much health and it got hit by a zombie, or you blew it up with dynamite by accident. Um, or as soon as the seventh spawn zone becomes active, um, so basically you're always on some sort of a time limit. So you can't just run around and be like, oh, we'll just run around and constantly avoid the zombies and we'll run them in circles because they're going to keep spawning, first of all, every turn. So if you don't eliminate some every turn, they're going to start to overwhelm you. Um, and then there's also the other in-game thing. Um, yep, so that's pretty useful. Then the guide goes through very nicely and uh, explains how zones and stuff work. Uh, so zone is basically any square that is walled off, whether it's inside a building or if it's on the play map divided by uh, these little sections on there. So all this is on four tiles. It's one zone because each side is barricaded off. Like the building itself is one full zone um, because it's all one giant area. Uh, and then like this, so what, each, each area is a little zone, yeah, just depending on where it's all sectioned off by extra little areas. So there's a bunch of different zones in here. Um, and then this little guy here is 
looks very confusing at first, but it basically explains how line of sight works. So to be able to attack either yourself or do something as your your survivor character or as a zombie, you have to obviously be able to see them. And just the quick ones in here, it's just kind of showing like, you can't see through walls or diagonal through areas. You can only see in a straight line down the map. Um, you can see into buildings, but you can only see one space into a building. You can't look all the way through a building because there's a wall or a door. Um, you can't see, um, same, same idea as you can see outside of a building if you're one room away, but you can't see through two rooms. Um, so it's not just going to assume there's stuff, something in the way to prevent you, but like Carl here can see all the way down the street. Molly here can see out of this room and then she can see down the entire street. But like May here can see one room but she can't see through that room past there. Uh, Casey's up here on a balcony. She can see, basically she's treated to be in this, any of these tiles. She, she can see left to right, up and down. But she can only see one down the stairs or they can see one up the stairs. They can't see everything in the building. Um, now what is kind of tricky is since she's, Molly's in this room, she can technically see into this room because this giant part here is all the same room. So you can assume that she's standing here to look out that door or this door, or she's standing over here to look out this door. Because it's all the same zone. Um, that's the basis of that. You know, it just determines what you can see, what can block you. And the same thing will go for zombies. Um, movement's the same way. You can move like one space, but you can't move through walls or diagonal. Um, weapons work very interesting. So there's melee weapons and then there's ranged weapons, which can either be a pistol or a rifle. Um, and then there's kind of a list down here. So the range, zero to one is how many spaces away it can attack, either on your same zone or one space away. So melee weapons are usually there. Range weapons usually, um, they might go something like two to four. So they can't hit anything closer than two spaces away, but they can go up to four spaces. Uh, the dice is the number of dice you roll for the attack. Uh, the little target systems, your accuracy. So that's how many, uh, what number you have to roll to actually hit with it. And then the splash of blood is your damage. So with this weapon here, you would, roll one die. If you got at least four or higher, you would do one damage. If you got three or less, you wouldn't do anything. Um, and then some of the guns have ammos. Uh, so pistols have bullets, and shotguns have shells. Uh, so just certain things that might matter on cards that reference the bullets. So just saying which ones do which. Um, you're not typically stuck to having, like, ammo. Like, you don't have to, like, have, like, like a cart of ammo sitting around. Like you're assumed to have unlimited ammo. Um, sometimes you have to reload, but um, yeah, you don't have to worry about that. And then there's noise, like guns will make noise, knives won't. So granted knives, you have to get up closer. They might do less damage, uh, but they're not going to attract bigger and more zombies. Um, yeah, so this is another good explanation of that. Some of the other types. So like this one you have to do a you know, one to five. So the starting weapons are typically worse than better we uh, <laughs> upgraded weapons. Um, so like the pistol does zero to one space where the shotgun does one to three range. Um, and then here's just kind of showing how a zombie uh, uh, stuff will happen with, the, with uh, banes and moving stuff around. So if there was a bang here and then Jimmy moves here and then shoots, now you'll have a bang on that spot. So now they'll want, and then if he moves here, now the zombies are gonna try and move towards this bang versus him unless they can see him. Uh, this, this book is a very good idea of um, showing how well they do that. Uh, so like, so it says, Pablo throws dynamite next to him, produ uh, produces a boom. So he knows he's moved from his previous loca location and put to where it is. So then he's going to move across the map. Um, so yeah, then now this zombie over here would try and attack him because you can see him. But this one's going to, you know, wants to go where the boom is first. Um, 
But yeah, and then it flips over as it goes, and then they get less and less. Uh, yeah, so just some different stuff there. And there's bounty weapons you can get, which if you per you complete certain missions, you can gain extra weapons, which is really fun. Um, all right, then let's look at just a quick one of our survivors. So all our survivors are going to have various stats. Um, what their signature weapon is, they can hold a special weapon up there. Otherwise, they can use any weapon. So anyone can use melee or ranged pistol, rifle, it doesn't matter. They just have an extra slot specifically for their weapon. Then down here is your XP. So as you defeat zombies or complete missions, you basically gain more XP. I guess it's called AP here for adrenaline points. Um, which will increase through these levels. So you start off in the blue and you get your character's blue ability, um, which will be different for every character. Then when you get into the yellow, you unlock their yellow stack. And then when you get to orange, you get to pick one of the two oranges. And when you finally hit red at the very end, you get to pick one of their red abilities. Uh, so it's kind of a neat way to level up your character as you go along. But it also makes the zombies harder. So when you flip over these cards to spawn them, um, if the highest level character you have is in the blue area, you only spawn two. But if you dig them up into the red or orange you could have eight or ten coming at you so having one person run around and only do all the leveling up and killing everything is a bad idea if you don't work as a team um you're gonna have one guy that's gonna have a bunch of extra abilities that can maybe take on some other zombies but you have other guys that are gonna be a lot less a lot weaker because they didn't level up so there's that uh then your inventory so this is the neat thing here you have your two equipped weapons, your, basically your left and right hand. Um, and then you can have your backpack up here of three extra items. So you can store extra items, you can swap them in and out, um, depending on what you might want to be or what your situation is. You're up close, you might want to swap. Um, and you can also have, again, your third special weapon there. This book does a very good job of describing how everything works. Um... And then we have our zombies. So there's three types of zombies. There are walkers, which are slow. They deal one damage, take one hit to eliminate, and they give you one experience point, your AP point. The brutes, which are a little bit bigger, fatter guys, still only deal one, but they take two to kill, and they still only do one. You only get one AP for it. And then the runners, which are um, deal one, take one damage, and provide one point. But they have two actions, so runners get a move and attack, or they can attack twice. So basically, the walkers are easy, brutes are harder to kill, and runners can get close to you faster. Then there's the big abominations, which can change for every abomination. Um, but their typical stats is they still only deal one damage, uh, but they provide, you have to ha spend three to take them out, um, excuse me, or dynamite, and they provide five points. 5 AP points. Um, if there's ever no abomination on the board, draw a card from the abomination that can spawn the cor corresponding abomination. So there's always going to be a ready abomination on the board. Um, yeah, so there's always going to be one ready to get ready to take to fight you. You just you know, never know which one it's going to be. Uh, so there's that. Alright, then what can players do on their turn? Alright. So we have movement. Of course, you can spend one of your three points to move uh, from one zone to the next. You know, different things there. You can search for items. Uh, su survivors can only search building zones and you know, if there's no zombies in the zones. You can't be digging through a chest, uh, you know, or a dresser or drawer or whatever, looking for if there's a zombie trying to eat your ass. Um, and then you draw a card from the equipment. So there's no... Um, there's no special, like, requirement to have to do it. You don't have to roll to see if you find stuff. Basically, if you're going to spend an action to search, you can get a thing of equipment. Um, usually, you can only perform one search per turn, even if it's a free extra action. But survivors can uh, do multiple, or the townsfolk can do multiple ones. They have a special ability. Um, when the equipment deck runs out, reshuffle all discarded equipment, excluding bounty weapons and starting weapons to make a new deck. So if you've ran out of weapons for some reason, you can use that. Uh, survivors can reorganize and trade your inventory with any player they wish. 
A survivor can simultaneously exchange any number of cards with only one other survivor in the same zone, and they may reorganize their inventory for free. A trade action doesn't have to be equal. Um, yeah, so you can spend a point. Basically, I'm taking a turn, like one of my points to spend time, like pulling out a new weapon, putting something away, doing that. But if you walk up to another player and you trade them an item, then you guys can rearrange your stuff for free. You're spending one point to do the same thing. You're basically stopping to do stuff. And then we have combat. You can do melee or ranged actions. Um, then you can take, an act, take or activate an objective. Some of those various things. There are machine actions. Um, so you can activate the wagon or the gatling gun. Just gives you different things to do there. Uh, it's not every mission is going to have them. You can make a noise. A survivor makes a noise in an attempt to crack zombies. Place a noise taking on its bang size. Um, so that's kind of neat too. Is that you can just purposely make noise to um, bring a zombie maybe towards you. Maybe like one of your other players shot a zombie over in an alley or in a building. You know, on the other side of the map. Oh and all the noise is there. So zombies are going to head out that way. You could run out into the middle of the street, basically making noise like, hey, start shouting, and then run off the other direction. So I'll attract the zombies that direction instead, as long as they can't see anybody. Because they'll always go after who they can see first, but if they can't see anybody, like they can't see you in the building, they won't go that way. Um, or you can just do nothing. You know, if you have nothing you really need to do, you don't have to spend all your abilities. Um, then there are class abilities. So the four classes are brawlers, which have special ability to charge, um, the faithful, um, which are like your religious characters, we have vague retro, which we'll, I'll look at them again when I look at the character cards. Gunslinger class have fanning, uh, which is extra shoot ability, and townsfolk have searching and home defender abilities. Um, so what do the zombies get to do? Zombies get to attack. So first of all, they're always going to try to attack you. If they can't hit anybody, they will then move. They'll move in the direction zone of survivors in line of sight that has a noise token. Then any zone with the most survivors in the line of sight with no noise token, and then survivors aren't visible and move towards a noise token. So again, that case I said you could make noise. You know, if there's enemies like uh, characters stand like in a house and they made a noise or whatever, there's a zombie standing outside that house. You could run into the street. Or the zombie could see you spending action to make a noise. They will look and they will, even though the other guys are one space away in that house, they will come towards you making noise. Because they might be like, well that guy's not moving so he's hiding. So maybe they might overlook him and come after you. Um, and then zombies get split so if they have multiple ways to go, you try and do it as fairly as possible. Um, and then runners of course have the two actions. Um, so here's one thing to remember. Survivors in a zone share wounds in any way a player is preferred, even if it means inflicting them all to a single survivor. Um, so that's what's also neat about this game is when you target, um, target for attack or zombies are targeting attack, they attack the zone or the square. So if you're shooting into a zone, um, and you do three damage, you can divide that damage as needed um, to all the zombies in the zone. You don't have to specifically target this zombie, then that zombie, and then make multiple attacks for each one. If you do three damage and there's three walkers in there, you can take out all three of them. Uh, it's not, I did three damage to this one guy, oh, I overkilled him. Now I have to shoot a second time. Uh, but the reverse goes the other way. If there are three zombies in your zone and there's two people, you have to divide that three damage amongst your two people. And being that you only have two or three health, that's not good. Um, we're just about done with the instructions. Um, so we have spawn. So zombies are always going to spawn. They're going to have these little spawn tokens here. Um, the yellow ones are starting zones, so they always spawn there first. And then they spawn going like around the board, however the spawn tokens are. So they'll spawn... Um, like, like, counter or clockwise around the board. Um, it's just, it's just a map showing how zombies will go after different people. Um, 
to whichever way they need to go. So, like, I think technically, like, this is showing, like, Trix is technically closer, so he'd be, like, one, two, three this way. But he's gonna go that way because of the boom. But he'll go this way because he can see him. Um, yeah, there you'll flip over a zombie card. It'll tell you what zombie uh, to spawn and how many based on your, your uh, levels. Uh, then you spawn at your different zones. Yeah, the starting zone is always the first one to spawn. Even if others are added later, start with this one. Continue clockwise. Um, so starting at the spawn zone may also contain other spawn codes. And sh they should appear in this order. Uh, starting spawn, mobile spawn, and abomination. Uh, so there are ways to move spawn tokens around, which is kind of cool. Uh, mobile spawn tokens always spawn zombies, but may be moved to a starting spawn zone using holy water. Um, mobile spawn tokens can be moved, but not deactivated or destroyed unless the mission states otherwise. Survivor may discard a holy water at range 0 to 1 within line of sight to move a mobile spawn token to the starting spawn zone. From now on, the stop. Starting spawn zone zones one zombie for itself and one for each additional mobi mobile zom mobile spawn token. Um, so it's neat there that way if like if like you have a let's say you have a spawn at each of the four corners of the map like north south uh, east and west you could move essentially move them all just to the north. Then now you only have to worry about zombies coming from that direction, which gives you you know you're not going to get surrounded as easy. Um, and then they have the Abomination Spawn, which would be a separate one. Um, always starts on its in inactive side. They can be moved, but not destroyed, so you can move them the same way. Um, as soon as Abomination Spawns, flip it to their active side. They immediately spawn if a player hasn't already spawned them. As soon as it's eliminated, um, they don't spawn again until another Abomination Spawn. So I did mistake that earlier. I said you're always going to be fighting one. If you draw another Abomination Token... Our spawn card, then one will spawn again. So if you do eliminate one, you can get potentially get a breath of fresh air. Um, so it's not no reason not to get rid of one. Uh, then we also have corpse piles. Uh, corpse piles zones may be found in most houses using holy water to get rid of them. Um, your corpse piles, corpse pile spawn tokens are not set on the board during step. Uh, they. Uh, they predefined places where corpse spawns are set and can be destroyed but not moved. Uh, whenever any survivor enters a building in the corpse pile for the first time, place a spawn token on it. Uh, from now on, it's active. Um, companions, uh, yeah, the building may sp the building may survive where multiple tiles contain several corpses. Um, in this case, only the corpse pile on the same tile, if present, as it enters survivor becomes active. The other one should become active whenever. It enters that tile. So this is one thing that's maybe a little bit different than some other zombie side games. Um, is you only activate when you actually step into that tile, not when you step into a room. Lots of the other game, when you enter a room, everything in there activates. So also you might the entire thing might be full. Um, but they only start to stir when you enter. So if I entered from this house here, I could enter here, I could go here, I could go up here. I wouldn't ever have to almost go in there if I don't want to spawn that. Um... Oh, I'm sorry, it's the entire, sorry. I mis, misrepresent because the entire house is a spawn. So as soon as you enter the house, that's going to start spawning. So you're going to want to take them out. Um, I miss, I am mis mistaken. I keep thinking, um, college thing. Yeah, so when you enter a, a building, they're going to start spawning. But you can get rid of them by using holy water. Um, uh, and then it gets rid of it completely. So you don't want to have to deal with them too much, but... The other ones are always going to keep spawning. So spawn here, two, three. And then these guys will also spawn. Um, but now if this is active, it'll go one, two, three. It'll spawn that direction instead. Um, yeah, so there's some various different stuff there. Um, Alright. Uh, let's just watch the end of the tutorial, or like how to play it, and then the next video I do will actually start going through all the content. So you have extra activation cards. Some cards you'll draw in your spawn. We have extra activation to uh, whatever it says, walkers, runners, or whatever. Um, 
Now it says, although containing up zombies could make the board, players may still run out. If it's required to place a zombie on the board, the remaining zombie miniatures are there, or spawn an abomination if it gets one. Um, yeah, so if you run out of zombies, then you're going to spawn an abomination. And if you still have to spawn more zombies, and you can't, then the um, abomination gets to attack more, um, or move, or do do more damage. Um, so that's again another part of this time thing is you don't want to just let the zombies pile up, pile up, pile up, and keep trying to dodge them, because if you let too many of them get out, or you don't deal with the spawn points, the abomination is going to run wild, um, and that could kill you a lot quicker. Um, all right, so that's that then. There are just extra little spe specificities in here. You can, um, I guess they're going to show how many dice you roll for combat. You can have dual wield. If you have two identical weapons with the dual symbol, uh, they can use both at the same time for a single action. So you can fire two of these cults at the same time. Um, your accuracy and your damage. Uh, so brutes and abominations take two or three damage. Now, it has to all be in the same time. There's no persistent damage on them. So, if you do, uh, you know, two damage to a spot, one takes out a walker, the second one can't take out the brute because he won't be able to take two full damage. Um, and then melee attacks, you kind of, I'm not going to go too much into all these. I kind of explained all those uh, range value. There is a targeting priority, though. So, when you're... Uh, Attacking into a tile, um, where here it says when shooting a ranged weapon, uh, so I does not choose the targets hit by successful roll. There are, six, are assigned to actors in the order. So first you have to hit a brute or abomination through the bigger ones, then you hit a walker, then you hit the runner. Um, so it'll be those different ones there. Now, does melee... Yeah, uh, player, so if you're doing melee, player divides the hits as they wish among the possible targets. So if you're right up close, you can choose who to hit, but if you're shooting from range, you're defined by which way you can. Basically, you have to hit the, the big fat guys first, and then you have to hit the slower guys, and then the speedy guys. Um, so target priority doesn't... Take zombie subspecies into account. Standard zombies from Undead Alive or any zombies from expansions share the same targeting priority. Brood Abomination, Walker, Runner. So there are some that have like, there are some walkers um, in one of the expansions that are a different type of walker, but they're still classified as walkers for any of that purposes. There's also Friendly Fire. Um, survivors can't hit themselves with their own attack. However, emergency situations call for a ranged attack aimed at a zone where a teammate is stuck. In that case, misses during the attack roll automatically hit survivors standing in the target zone. Sign these friendly fire damage anyway. Um, as you will damage two weapons, inflict two wounds, and so far. Melee doesn't apply to friendly fire. Uh, so again, you're up close, you can kind of choose who you're attacking, but if you're ranging, if you miss, you might... Oh crap, I ax I didn't hit that zombie, I hit the guy standing next to him. So you gotta watch maybe doing that. Uh, you can also use uh, dynamite to blow up areas. Uh, there's fanging weapons. I'm gonna go over these when I actually look at the cards. Um, but there's some different other ones. Uh, bullets, knives, reload. Um, one special zone in here are the balconies. Um, so balconies are considered to be street level. Um, perform move action through the ability or use a skill jump or special rules to get up there. Uh, they just have their different lines of sight. But yeah, basically a guy can get up on a balcony and shoot from a balcony. Um, so that's just kind of neat. So to how much range this guy, Jimmy here, has. Because you can see down the street, all the way down, you can see the other two balconies. Um, or all three other balconies. So yeah, he has some really good range. He just can't see in any other of the buildings because he's up higher. Um, special spawn zone, cemeteries, mine, and abomination zones. They're active via different parts of the map. And then there's the train. 
Um, so there's various stages. They'll use the train, which can be either mobile or immobile. If it's immobile, um, you just add it to however it shows it in the, in the game. If it's mobile, it'll cross the board. So when it's mobile, you'll start with three railroads. And then as you move it uh, through the game, you will flip over each tile. And each one will be a different. You'll replace the railroad behind it. So there's always going to be a railroad showing. Um, so here they're showing some different things here. So like the top here is the actual railroad, number one. So you can cross any out of that zone. But then part two is like half railroad, half train. So now the train is a separate piece. And then it divides these two sides up to three. But then when the train moves, if it moves down, all of a sudden... Yo, know, now you have some extra room there. Alright, and I think we have... Uh, you can run over zombies, so if they're on the train and it's coming, you can definitely lure them into those spaces. That's a fun aspect. But yeah, so here's how the train basically works. So you have, like, flip over the first railroad trial, it's the, it's the, uh, uh, the lo locomotive for the train. Then the next turn, you'll move that one forward. You'll take that that tile, flip it over. It becomes the next car for the train. And then when that moves off, you flip the locomotion locomotive over to become the rails to show that keep moving. Then the last time, you move the other train. So it's kind of a neat mechanic. Um, getting escorting companions, different stuff there. Ultra red mode. And this is essentially saying that if you get through your red area, you've killed enough enemies, you can then circle back around, start your experience points back over, your AP points over, and then as you get back to orange and red, you can select a second ability for each, and then potentially a third ability. Um, it's just like you keep upgrading your character, so if there's a lot of stuff in there, and you're fighting a long battle, you can uh, do that. This is kind of a neat way to, if you want to have, like, a longer game. Then there's missions. I'm not going to go through every mission in here, but we'll just look at the tutorial. So, here's going to show our maps. It's going to tell us which map tiles we're going to use, where to put all the spawn points, where starting zombies may be. Um, sometimes you start with them. It goes to survivor starting zone, where the exit zone is. You put noise tokens. Um... Also, what other ones you need, like here's going to say we're going to have five objective tokens, but it doesn't tell us where to put them right now. So it'll tell us where to do that in the rules, how to find them. Um, they might be in some buildings or wherever. Um, and then also limit limitations, some might have class limitations. Then like we have like the second setup gets a little bit bigger more, it's four tiles. Everything's spread out a little bit more. Um, this shows you their layout. Again, so it's 8V, R1, R2, 5V. Uh, yep, and then we just have more different ones. So there, I think there's eight missions in here. You can get some of these that are really big. Big full town. Um, not a lot of giant, like, open areas. So it's usually, like, a street. And that's it. You know, you might get, like, a four-way corner or something at the train here to add a little bit extra space. But not a ton of extra, like, just big open areas. Um, yeah, so ten, ten different missions you can do in the game. I think eleven if you count the tutorial. Um, this one, like, specifies, like, no faithful. Um, gives you some different objectives here. Then the final part of the book are all these skills. So I'll keep referencing this in the second part of the video where I go through all the box. Because this is all the different notes of character abilities in there. Which is nice that they have this just in alphabetical order so you can find stuff very quickly. And then on the back of it we're going to just as the quick what you can do on all your turns. You can just leave this space up while you're playing and then your priorities. Alright, so that was the How to Play Zombie Side Dead or Alive, a quick walkthrough of it. Again, not a full sit down, suck a game up tutorial, but at least you have an idea. So check out uh, part two of this video where I go through all the actual components of the game. See you there. Bye.